Ready to go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. David Shearman. I'm doing my presentation today on wireless devices. Uh, majority of my class today is going to be on medical wireless devices. I've decided to go that route because I've got more interest in how to take care of my wife and take trying to help with her monitoring her heart rate and pulse rate and things of that nature. So most of the lecture is going to be on that. Um, and I also wanted to kind of think about the future. And I think most of you all know what this looks like. It's the old days, it's called a communicator. So nowadays, it's a wireless phone. And uh, we've come quite a way since then. Um, we use them in a lot of ways that we couldn't use before. In the old days, it was called, on the show, it was called a track order. It had multi-purpose of uh, taking different readings and so forth. And uh, now we're taking it to the future. Um, so today, we've got these kind of devices for medical reasons. Um, they've actually started using them on animals. Uh, medical monitors are processed by Gainesville, Florida, and could be ready in about a year. Uh, Jensen Sin, professor of electrical and computer engineering at University of Florida, has developed a device that monitors heart rate and respiration wirelessly using radio waves which eliminates the need for uh, attaching leads to the animal's body. We've got a baby chihuahua, and I don't want to try to do that. That would not be a good idea. So this makes it a lot easier, and the monitoring can be uh, done for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it can be uploaded to the cloud, making it accessible from anywhere at any time. It's been uh, tested at the High Springs Animal Hospital and been licensed at Gainesville-based True Vitals. Tim Toppin, the CEO, says the device will be commercially available next fall. Uh, the idea has been around for decades. In the early 70s, it was about the size of a small refrigerator. And uh, Lynn's 21st century version is about the size of a Kindle tablet, about eight by five inches. It has a range of about 10 feet so it typically hangs on the side of the cage where the animal stays while it's being checked. And the power transmitted equals about 1% of that transmitted by a wireless telephone. A human use approval should begin early this year and the hopes are to have it ready by early 2016. And I've got a video that uh, shows about that.
And I've got another video uh, on some more monitoring devices that we're using in hospitals here. So far, and uh, we're getting better at this all the time. You can buy them in Walmart or anyplace, just about anywhere. Pharmacy or drugstore for about fifteen to thirty dollars, I believe, depending. On, it could go up to about hundred dollars, depending on what you need. Um, we've got other devices, of course. I'm not doing as much on what you call your everyday medical wireless devices. I'm concentrating, as I said, mostly on medical wireless devices, but. 
we have had devices in the past that can look through walls and help you with security problems. Um, ADT is coming up with things all the time to help you get more secure in your home, in your car, uh, wherever you are at your workplace or away. Um, so here's another uh, video about uh, security situations. You might need something of that nature. So this is a video on security devices. To apologize for the sound, I'm sorry. I didn't have a chance to check in at home. And medical medical uh, wireless technology, wearable health technology, ABI, Allied Business Intelligence, predicts by 2016 that wireless medical devices sales will reach 100 million plus annually. Bluetooth technology is used to track elderly patients' movements and send health measurements to caregivers. BodyTel uses the same Bluetooth technology to allow patients to widely send measured body values to the doctors. And uh, I've got a last video on that. Helping to understand how far people can come even after 100 years.
know that was a light touch, but we have come a long way with our devices, and uh, we've tried to be as up to date as we can, trying to get things easier and easier to do things without uh, having to keep us plugged in, as they say, to the to the internet without using a wireless device. So everything's coming down to where we're going to be in the next 50 years or so. Hopefully, uh, the technology the way it's going. You only have to touch a button, and the doctor will be right there within a few minutes with help, or maybe even if necessary, uh, an ambulance call can be done. Just touch the button, let them know immediately what your conditions are, because everything's already wired into their uh, network, and they know what to do. And being more able to help us in the future with getting better health care. And that ends my lecture.